now. Um, we do have a guest. We've got uh, uh, Bruce Naylor from the Frugal Tech. Uh, he's going to join us for today's topic, which is going to be home networking and a few other ones. And uh, welcome, Smart Scarecrow, to the show. And uh, that's going to be very shortly. How you guys doing? Um, I'm really uh, excited because we do have Bruce with us, and uh, let me go ahead and put him on. How you doing there, Bruce? Bruce Naylor. Hey, I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me on the show. And uh, and uh, we actually been on the uh, network before, which was the uh, shows.net, which lasted for a little while. Right. And uh, of course, I've been on your show. It was on, uh, I believe, Linux and business. And today's topic is going to be um, home networking, uh, mother, uh, along with some other few other topics. And uh, and uh, probably, you know, I know this is kind of a stupid question. I admit I'm not uh, formally trained in networking, but um, I guess you kind of need something like um, some kind of router. I don't know if there's any other technology allows you to network together, but uh, well, it's the easiest way to do it. Okay. Um, I mean, uh, there is sharing, internet connection, sharing, and, and that kind of thing. But, yeah, ultimately, most people will get a router. And uh, most, you know, and today you want to get a wireless router whenever possible. And, um, gosh, um, it's not difficult, but, you know, it can be kind of weird and problematic with uh, wireless home networking. I know my brother-in-law had... Uh, had secured his wireless router and uh, had changed the password from the default to something else. And he lost it. He couldn't remember <laughs> what, what the password was. And uh, so we had to basically do a factory reset of his wireless routers, a Linksys WRT54GS. And uh, everything's fine except for his laptop. Uh, for whatever reason, it's an HP Pavilion uh, DV8000, and it's got the built-in HP wireless assistant, and it absolutely now refuses to uh, locate and uh, uh, find any wireless networks whatsoever, so I had to bring it back home to uh, the office here to work on it. Just uh, kind of a weird anomaly. Um, what Now, what kind, uh, I'm guessing you have more than one computer hooked up in uh, some kind of network, so uh, what's the kind of network the, that you use uh, particular? Um. We have a, uh, our router is a uh, Apple Airport Extreme Base Station, dual band, so it's got, it supports wireless G and wireless N simultaneously. Uh, to that, we have a wireless uh, uh, Epson multifunction printer. We have a Windows Home server that uh, kind of is the heartbeat of the of the beast. We use it more or less as a NAS, uh, more than anything else. Uh, we have one, two, four Macs that connect to it, uh, Some uh, one of which is wired, three of them are wireless connections. Uh, we have one, two, three Windows PCs, and those are all connected to uh, the, uh, the internet through the, uh, the, the base station. Then we have a uh, Netgear switch. Oh, okay. Um, now, uh, tell you the truth, I couldn't really broadcast uh, the way I do right now if I didn't have a some kind of network set up, because mm -hmm. um, when I'm not broadcasting and uh, you know I have friends or family over, a lot of times they need access, and uh, so yep. uh, initially I started out in my bedroom uh, broadcasting, and uh, of course I had the shot of the bed in the background. So initially I changed it into this back bedroom, which was pretty much empty. And so what I had to do is I had to uh, run everything. Uh, of course, I wanted a wired connection because it's it's a lot uh, more stable. 
Right. So I had to switch everything into this back bedroom and hook everything up through wireless, um, uh, which is my son's computer and, and my own. And so I couldn't really uh, do what I do now without uh, some kind of network. Mm-hmm. Now, um, I want to get, I guess wireless is probably the most popular because, I mean, nowadays you got like, um, uh, especially mobile devices, um, almost right. every kind has some kind of wireless connection. You need to have a way to um, connect to the internet unless it has some kind of 3G or 4G or whatever. So, you know, wireless, um, you know, router or something like that is almost, um, you know, you really need to have one. And uh, now, recently I did upgrade to a new, um, oops, I think I used the wrong uh, camera shot. Oopsie. And... Uh, <laughs> It happens to me too. <laughs> yeah, wrong camera shot. Um, but oh, okay. I decided to go to a um, a wireless N because I use so many devices that have wireless. Um, that uh, I believe with the wireless N you can get um, basically twice the range and uh, twice the bandwidth or something like that. Yeah. Well, so wireless N um, is. Uh, very popular now. It's the uh, about as fast as you're going to go in, in a uh, wireless network. Uh, it do have a greater range and much faster uh, data transfer rate. Right now, if you're just you know doing web browsing that sort of stuff, uh, you probably won't see a significant difference wireless and over wireless G. Um, where really where you really see the big difference is if you're transferring large files wirelessly. That's where you're going to see a big difference with wireless N. Uh, I have noticed, uh, for example, I used to have a Roku player, okay? And the Roku had wireless G. Whenever I would try to stream high-definition movies, um, uh, and it was, uh, it, it, what would happen is they would stutter and stall and all that. So now we have an Apple TV, uh, the new Apple TV, and uh, it's wireless N. We don't have that issue anymore. That just, that just totally went away. Well, you do want to be careful, like the, the Apple Airport Extreme is a dual-band router, so it broadcasts both G and N simultaneously. Uh, and you want to be careful because uh, you can uh, get a wireless N, but if you have wireless G devices, uh, you then need to run in what's called mixed mode. So your wireless N and G devices will uh, connect wirelessly, and when you do that, Everything downshifts to the lowest common denominator, so you're losing a lot of that benefit of wireless N. Yeah, yeah, that's what I've heard. Um, I believe all my devices right now are wireless N, so I, uh, that's what I went ahead and and you know went to the uh, wireless N. Right. Um, you know these wireless N standard, um, mm-hmm. and uh, I just got this you know modem recently, so I had to do some research because I couldn't understand. Uh, you know, it has um, like the two uh, the two frequencies, I guess, which is two point four, uh, which most uh, a lot of stuff uses, and then the five gigahertz range. So I was thinking the 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 uh, where you get the bandwidth is one was for upload, and the other was for download or something. But I got that totally wrong. And from what I understand, the two point four gigahertz range is um, because there's so many devices that use it, you know, uh, you know, like supposedly baby monitors and uh, other wireless routers and so forth. There's all kinds of stuff used the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum. And uh, I guess the 5 gigahertz was supposedly so, um, not as many devices use it, so um, there's a lot less chance for it to be interfering with other devices, I guess. Uh, is that the correct? Exactly. Uh, so... Uh, what what the five gigahertz range is going to do to you is going to help you get things like an extended range. It's going to not interfere with so much different uh, electronics. It's just a whole lot better way to go. Uh, car, was it Web Guru? Uh, I think says so. Uh, mixed mode limits the end bandwidth. Yes. Okay, is mixed mode the M I M O or is that something else? I. Okay. Mimo, Mimo is kind of uh, like multiple antennas. Uh, is oh, that's different then. Asking and receiving, right? So, uh, mixed mode. What mixed mode essentially does is it brings everybody down, all the wireless devices, to the lowest common denominator. That way, G and N devices can both join the same wireless network. There you go. 
Oops, just did it again. Um, yeah, that, I mean, now, uh, I had to do some little homework, and uh, I ran out of time uh, yesterday. I had a bunch of stuff come up. So, uh, yeah, I was kind of a little bit confused on the MIMO. I guess the MIMO is the uh, two different frequency bands, I guess. And uh, now, uh, yeah, that's I kind of want to go into the wireless router uh, scheme. Now, of course, then we go into security, and... Uh, and not, not really talking about virus protection per se, because that can be on the individual um, computer, I guess. But I'm thinking more as firewalls um, and uh, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And uh, now I know that pretty much like the single computers, I'm guessing if it's just a one computer to the Internet, um, a lot of the operating systems have uh, built-in soft, uh, software firewalls, I believe. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, uh, I'm not so much familiar with the the the, the Windows. I think is it uh, the Security Essentials? Does that do that or? Uh... Well, Security Essentials is not a firewall. Oh, okay, so it's a separate. Uh... Well, no, that is a, that is a uh, antivirus and anti malware application for Microsoft. It works in conjunction with Windows Firewall. Yeah, I admit I'm behind on Windows stuff. I haven't used uh, Windows in uh, five years. I'm uh, <laughs> behind the curve on that. Um, <coughs> right. And, uh, of course, I know in the Macs you can do it uh, in the preferences. Uh, you just select Firewall and activate it. And then uh, in Linux, um, I believe it uses iTable still. And mm -hmm. uh, But I think by default it's not activated. You, uh, you can do it either in the terminal or a DUI program like Firestart or whatever. Now, right. I'm guessing if you're using multiple computers through a network you'd probably want like a single um place where all the computers go through a central firewall and I, I guess the best way is using a router i don't know if there's another way well routers uh on the consumer level are okay it's a certain level of protection okay um but you can go a step further and you can actually, you know, you could buy a physical firewall, I suppose, but most consumers would never do that. Um, I, I think combined with your Windows firewall and your router, I think you're going to be pretty, pretty safe. But it's important to understand how a firewall operates um, before you go configuring with too much different stuff. And also uh, the capabilities of the router. Okay. Uh, and I'm not a uh, 100% expert on all things firewall, but I have worked with uh, uh, several different manufacturers what's called unified threat management devices. Uh-huh. Uh, okay. Um, uh, so, uh, including Untangle is, is one company. Oh, I've heard of that, yeah. There's another company I've done some stuff with. There was a third one. I Their name escapes me right off the bat. Um the, they all make unified threat management devices, and they have firewalls. They're, so they're an appliance that, that basically has a hardware, or, you know, functions as a firewall as well as anti-spam, anti-malware, all this, kind of an all-in-one box unit. Uh, Wizard says that uh, most consumers don't have critical data to protect or, they, or anyone would want. Well, I have to agree with Wizard on that. I think that that's uh, pretty much the case. So I think with a good quality router and your Windows firewall enabled, you're going to be pretty safe from most of that anyway. So do you think, um, like, um, in a multi-computer network that for the home I'm talking, um, yeah. so you think perhaps each computer have a firewall activated as long uh, and perhaps whatever's built into the router or? Yeah. Oh, Okay. I think that's adequate for most consumers. Uh, now, now you know, oh. uh, I see Scarecrow in there. He has like a PFSense firewall, which is a really nice unit. Uh, but that's not your typical consumer. Now, is that PFSense? Is that the software that you install on a dedicated computer? Or is it a The PFSense is a, a, a pl an appliance type device. Uh, Scarecrow, correct me if I'm wrong on that. Scarecrow? <laughs> Maybe it takes a little while for it to get to him. But, uh, okay. Uh, so uh, now some probably, now I know there's supposedly like a soft software firewall and then uh, supposedly a hardware firewall. Mm -hmm. Well, a hardware firewall is, <laughs> is essentially 
a computer running software. He's yeah. got a bedded version of Linux running 